Most people would agree that the Zonai wing left a lot to be desired. It's not really the wing's fault. It could be fun to use, but it's not really worth spending all that time making something cool with it, only for it to last like one minute. We have come up with many ways to get around that by either spawning new wings mid-air or just avoiding them altogether. But these options don't have what we really want. A wing that lasts forever. Well today, that changes. There is a mini game on Eventide Island that puts you on a wing that will never disappear. This video is going to explain how to obtain the affinity wing on all versions of the game. The story of how we achieve this is honestly super awesome, but it'll take some time before we can produce that type of video. And given that the wing is so awesome, we thought it best to show you how to get it as soon as possible. Before we get started, we need to thank the people that spent about a month not only figuring out how to get this wing, but also figuring out how to do it on all versions of the game, with or without glitches, and refining those methods to make it easy as possible. First, I'd like to thank the Bread Pirate for the original inspiration. I'd also like to thank Lord Robert for rallying the team around this common goal. And I'd like to thank all the awesome people from the Wing Rescue Squad and the Hyrule Engineers Club. Last but not least, I'd like to thank Mulberry. He was the first person to free the Infinity Wing. Alright, let's get started. The Infinity Wing is on Eventide Island and is only used during the minigame at the top of the island. You must have cleared out all four enemy camps and talked to the guy on the beach before you can access the minigame. But I also recommend dropping down into the chasm and activating this light route. You can also use Ascend right next to this light route to get straight up to the minigame. We have a small list of items that you need to make sure that you have. A few hover stones, a few rockets, two shields, a bow and some arrows, and a few zonite. If you are on 1.2 or 1.2.1, you'll also need a healthier amount of zonite, probably 100 to 200. You'll need some fans, at least six, one stake, and two dragon parts. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on why we're doing what we're doing, but that's for a later video. Just follow the steps as close as you can. Our main goal is to get both Link and the Wing down the chasm, but there are a couple things in the game trying to stop us from doing that, and all the steps you're about to take will help us get around these blocks. There are two main methods to go over. First is the Fuse Entanglement method, and this works only on 1.0 and 1.1.2. The second is the Horse method, and it works on all versions of the game, so if you are struggling with the first method or you are on 1.2 or 1.2.1, this method is for you. I highly recommend watching the whole video because you might learn something. So we'll start with the Fuse Entanglement method. It isn't too hard once you get the object Fuse Entangled, so let's go over how to do that right now. We're going to Fuse Entangle a weapon as our object. On the beach there is a wooden stick, let's just use that. Let's save before we start so that if we mess up we can try again. Place the stick in front of you, equip a shield with nothing currently fused to it. Select the Fuse ability. Now you should be in this position. This part is all about timing. It's more lenient than it looks. The goal is to hold the L menu to get the abilities to pop up, but right before the menu pops up, we want to press ZL to try to fuse to the shield, while not letting go of L. Now, while continuing to hold the L menu, you can look at Link. You will see one of three things. If you still see the weapon on the ground, you press CL too late. And if you see the green fuse effect on Link's back, you likely pressed it too soon. But if you see neither, and maybe a little bit of green, but no weapon, and nothing on his back, you are successful. Now, while holding L, the next part is getting into the shield menu. Immediately after letting go of L, we need to start tapping the D-pad left. We want to continue to tap it until we see the shield menu, and then we can hold left on the D-pad to keep the menu up. Now that the menu is up, change to another shield and let go of the D-pad. Now that we have the weapon fuse entangled, we need to make sure from this point on that we don't change our shield for any reason. We will ultra hand this weapon and stick it to this board that's over here. Now unequip any weapon you currently have on, and pick up the stick. Now that you have the stick equipped, make sure you don't change your weapon either. Now we can head up to the top of the hill to play the minigame. 
Once you're at the minigame, we have three options from faster to slower. They all have their pros and cons, so I'd rather offer you each option. The fastest option. Start the minigame and immediately recall the wing. A quick note is you can't get too far from this wing, and once you leave this platform, the wing cannot touch the ground. Turn around and drop your stick, go into auto build, and create the board from earlier, making sure the weapon you dropped gets attached. Grab the board and put it at an angle on the tip of the wing. Make sure the weapon is off to the side. And now you're ready to go. Good luck. The wing isn't going to fly all that different from normal because of the board. To easily control the wing, hold ZL and keep it held through the entire flight. We want to stay pretty close to the ground, so try to fly right over these trees and then head right to the chasm. Once you are over the chasm, recall the wing and immediately walk forward onto the board and keep walking until the minigame ends. You and the wing should be going down the chasm. If so, you can skip ahead to the FE success chapter. If not, you can go to troubleshooting or try a slower setup. The medium speed option. Start the mini game and recall the wing. Shoot a hover stone with your bow and arrow right in front of you and attach it to the top of the wing. Now you can stop the recall. Break off the hover stone and continue to hold it while you fly all the way to the chasm. Try to stay as low as you can, and as soon as you're flying over the chasm, attach the hover stone. This should stop you right over the chasm. If you overshot the chasm, you can recall the wing to pull yourself back a little bit, and if you missed it altogether, you can adjust with rockets and recall. If getting there and in a good position isn't working out for you with these first two methods, we can just take our time. Start the mini game and recall the wing. Shoot a hover stone and attach it to the top of the wing. Now you can attach another hover stone to the back of the wing or a stabilizer. A stabilizer is going to move a little faster than another hover stone. Now we're going to use rockets to make our way all the way to the chasm. As you get closer, you can use a combination of recall and rockets. Recalling the rocket and canceling it less than a second later should stop all the momentum. We want to line up with the chasm so that our wing is pretty much over it, but still have at least a little bit of opening in front of us. Now that we are over the chasm, shoot another hover stone and attach it to the back. Drop your weapon and use auto build to make the board from earlier, ensuring that the weapon gets attached. Attach the board to the tip of the wing at an angle away from you and make sure the weapon is on the side. If you need to remove the front hover stone to put the board on, that's fine. Just let it hang out underneath the wing. Once you have the board attached, you can remove the front hover stone completely. Make sure that the only Zonide device attached is the hover stone on the back of the wing, excluding this wing. Now get in a position at the front of the wing or just slightly on the board. You're going to remove the hover stone in the back and recall the wing right afterwards. You need to start walking off the front of the wing onto the board until the minigame ends. If you did this successfully, Link and the wing should now be falling down the chasm. Troubleshooting. If neither Link or the wing moved after the minigame, first you need to check what's in that dialog box. If it says you can't leave this area right now, that means you are too low to the chasm and you need to start just a bit higher. If it says what are you doing you can't get off the wing, then that means you might have failed the fuse entanglement. You can fail the fuse entanglement if you don't have the weapon you entangled attached to the board and lost it somewhere along the way, or you change shields or weapons for whatever reason, or it was never entangled in the first place. If this method is giving you issues or you would just like to try another way, you can skip ahead to the horse method. If you and the wing are falling down the chasm, don't press any buttons. There isn't much you can do at this point but hope. It's okay if you fall off the wing, just wait until you are standing still and then wait until you see the wing. We want to make sure the wing makes it all the way down, but there is a chance you won't see anything. 
So if that's the case, just wait about 15-20 seconds before you hit continue. The only issue you could run into is if you landed too high on the wall in the chasm. But either way, just continue the dialogue with the minigame people. They will try to pull you back and most likely fail. They will ask if you want to try again and you will say no. If you do get pulled back, unfortunately you'll just have to try again. Once you've exited the dialogue, it's time to find the wing. You'll either see it right off the bat or you might have to look for it. Get a hover stone and rock it up. Use recall to help you see where it may have went. You can also head up the chasm a little bit to make sure it didn't get hung up in there. But once you've found the wing, you're done. You can fuse it to your shield and take it to Pellison at Terrytown and have him remove it. If you have access to a shield duplication glitch, I highly suggest duping the shield and placing one in your house so you always have a spare if you need. This wing has no time limit, but only this one. If you make one with auto build, the auto built version will have a time limit. If you got your wing, welcome to the club. While you're flying around Hyrule, enjoying the views, you hear the wind in your ear. Now let's talk about the horse method. The horse with the harness fulfills the same requirements that we needed fuse entanglement for. This might seem like it's going to be difficult, but I promise you as long as you follow along, it's not as hard as it looks and honestly, it's a little fun adventure. Alright, so we're going to take our time now and ensure that we reach our destination in one piece. First, we are headed to the John South Shrine. We need to progress until we get this floating board. We're going to stick an apple to it, and then afterwards we can leave the shrine to build our horse transport box. The easiest place to do this is Terrytown because we'll need some extra boards and it's a nice flat place to build. Drop a few apples on the ground and then auto build two of the floating boards. Now glue them together to get this shape. Drop two apples and then build the auto build piece for the two boards. Connect them like this to kind of make a tube and then you can grab your apples. Now we can grab these three boards over here. We'll use this one to make a wall. Then we'll take this long board and connect it at the top. We're going to add a stake to the smaller board and then connect it to the longer board. This will be our ramp. Now save it as a favorite in your auto build settings. We need a horse with a harness to take to the beach. The best stables to start this journey is Dueling Peaks. Grab your horse and make sure the harness is on. Make your way to this point on the map. You can pause here if you'd like to use this map as a guideline. Step 3. Transportation. Before we get started, we need to give the horse a snack. Once you arrive at the beach, we are going to use auto build to build the box from earlier. We're going to bring it over to the water, making sure the ramp is still a little bit over land. We're going to put the stake in the ground, but before we let go, we're going to tell it to angle back, but let go as soon as possible. That way we have this slight incline into the box. Now you can take the horse in the box. Moving the horse is much easier while holding ZL, but this will only work if the horse is standing still before you press ZL. Once the horse is in the box and centered more or less, you can hop off and glue a hover stone to the top. You can break off this long board, attach the harness to the box, and attach this other board to close up the box. Now we want to put some fans on the box to help us get across. Six fans should do fine and we'll place them low in order to help keep balance. Now we'll hop on the top and glue a steering stick. We'll remove the hover stone and start crossing the ocean. Once you arrive, try to get up on the beach as much as you can, but a little water's fine. Open the front part of the container and unglue the harness. You can ride the horse off by using ZL. 
Now it's time for step four, building the drop box. First, we are gonna grab these two boards off the beach and glue them at a 90 degree angle. Then using auto build, we're going to make the same two boards and glue them here. Now we can reuse our old transport box or auto build another one. We only need this much of the build, so you can remove the rest. Place the box here about this close to the chasm. Attach the other boards to the top of the transportation box. Get the horse inside the box and glue the harness to the box. Now take one dragon part and glue it to the build. Step 5. Getting the wing to the build. At this point we can head up to the minigame. Before we start though, walk behind the starting point and place a wing. Now drop a dragon part and attach it to that wing. Now collect the dragon part and start the minigame. As soon as the minigame starts, recall the wing and shoot a hoverstone straight ahead. Grab the hoverstone and place it on the track with about one wing of extra space between you and the hoverstone. Now cancel the recall. You should have a little bit of space behind you on this track. We're going to turn around and then use auto build to select the wing and dragon part combo. Move the auto build so that it picks up one of the wings behind the minigame people and bring it back to glue it together, making sure that it isn't going to move when you leave. Now that's in place. Place, you can alter hand the hoverstone to remove it. Now you have two options. You can hold this hoverstone and fly all the way to the back of the box, or you can just use rockets to help slowly bring yourself over there. Once you're near the back of the box, the goal is to attach the wing to the box. You can do this by using rockets or dragging the hoverstone and then attaching it to the build and recalling that hoverstone. Once you're close, you can attach a stabilizer to the wing and make any last minute adjustments you may need to make sure the front of the wing is over the back of the box. Now, place a hoverstone under the back of the wing. No need to actually attach it to the wing. Then you can remove the hoverstone in front of you. The stabilizer should keep you level. Once you're over the back of the box and have your stabilizer on, you can use a hoverstone to drag the front of the wing over the back of the box and then break off the hoverstone so that you land on the back of the box. At this point, you can glue the wing to the back of the box and remove the stabilizer. At this point, you want to make sure that there is no zone eye device attached to the build other than the wing itself. Now it's time for the final step. We need something to slowly drag us over the chasm. What we used in this example is two pumpkins, two objects that you can glue together and then pick up to get out of the way. Now we're going to use auto build, but before we build, we're going to place the build location to be over the chasm. You want to build it at level with the rest of the build. You want to make sure that you have your gyro settings off because when you ultra hand the build, you can only really pull back. You don't want any up or down movement. As soon as it's built, we're going to recall. Once it's recalled, we'll grab it, pull it back to our build, and then recall it. This will bring us over the chasm, but stop us right there at the end. We're going to walk off the front and continue to walk until the minigame is over with. Now, you and the build should be heading down the chasm. Troubleshooting. Did the game complete when you attached the wing to the build in front of the chasm? This means the wing you placed upside down at the very beginning didn't stay there. Double check that it doesn't move and make sure you have a dragon part attached. This prevents the minigame from ending if you touch the ground. Did the build freeze in place when the minigame ended? Then you either forgot to attach the harness to the build or it became unattached during the time between the start of the minigame and the moment you walked off. Try again and double check this time if the harness is on before you get off the wing. Don't press any buttons until you reach the bottom of the chasm. And when you get there, finish the dialogue and do not select try again. You can detach the wing and fuse it to a shield. 
Now that you have the wing fused and you are on version 1.2 or 1.2.1, currently there isn't a way to dupe your shield, so you can't dupe this wing. It might seem like we're sacrificing the horse, but the horse doesn't die. Due to being in an active minigame and ending it after crossing the barrier into the depths, the game just puts the horse back where it was on the island. So you can repeat this process one or two more times to at least get an extra one to put on a stand in your house. Otherwise, you can take this shield to Pelison and have him remove the wing. Only this wing is infinite. An auto-built version of this wing will still have the timer. If you got your wing, welcome to the club. Just remember when you're done flying it, refuse it to your shield so you can unfuse it again later. If the horse method isn't working out for you, I would sub to Blaze's YouTube channel as he's coming out with a method for 1.2 and 1.2.1 that doesn't involve the horse. I know I said this was just going to be a guide, but I can't just like not do something. Okay, maybe I can not do something. It's amazing what we can do when the community comes together. And if you think there isn't much left to discover in this game, you would be sadly mistaken. I highly suggest joining either the Speedrunners Discord or the High Rolls Engineers Discord, as we have many ongoing projects and we can always use your help. So, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments. If you got a wing, maybe consider subscribing. First, I want to thank all the new subs, 7,000. I can't even begin to comprehend 7,000 people. Also, I want to thank my channel members, Jono, Taco Sensei, Jankito, Devin, and Why You Have to Be Mad. Anyways, thanks for watching.